Hello everyone, a little brief one here outside of the normal time but a little special bonus. My new telescope's arrived and I thought I would unbox it live for you and I'm also going to put this video on YouTube so that should be fun for everyone. So if you hold on a second I will grab it and we'll get started. So, here is the box. I bought the Skywatcher Heritage 150P. You can see the Skywatcher logo over there. This is a six inch telescope and probably the most compact and affordable six inch scope on the market. Um, there is also a five inch version, which is very good quality. Now, if you're in America and you're interested in it, I would suggest getting the one called Astronomers Without Borders One Sky, which is the exact same scope as the five inch, except that half the money goes to charity. So, um, let's have a look at the inside. There's a reason I chose this, and I'm happy to endorse and advise others to get this. In terms of a starter scope, this particular model is probably the best you're going to get, um, for the money at least. So, we'll start with the usual, get the side panels, and then we can open the top. Of course, telescopes are made from glass, so we're going to have to hope that it arrived fine, but I'm reasonably confident because this is well packaged. Having shipped here from Germany, where I bought it from, though it is made in America, they're about $280 there. In Europe, they're a little more expensive, coming in at about 300 euros. Though a large part of that can be accounted for by the fact that in America, the taxes aren't included in the sales price. So, so let's try a different approach. Flip this over. We should be able to slide it out, I think. Piece. That looks better. There we go. That's the outside box off. Uh, this is currently upside down. <coughs> now, in case you're not familiar, this is what's called a Dobsonian Newtonian reflector. Dobsonian, named after the guy who designed this type of stereoscope, John Dobson. And it refers to the way these pieces move. Not super important to explain, but that's what it is. Newtonian reflector means it has a mirror rather than lenses. And you big thing is with Newtonians, you look in the front rather than the back. What makes it so compact for a fairly large scope is that it's a fold away design, which is one of its many advantages. Yes, hello Jack, come say hello to the people since you want to. Hello, that's Jack. He's a teeny tiny little cute. <laughs> so, let's lift the top up. And nice sturdy foam packaging. That's always a good thing with sensitive, fragile items. Inside, we have this small box. I'm guessing that's eyepieces. It comes with a 10 and 25 millimeter eyepiece. Then we have the telescope itself, which seems not to be very sturdily attached to the base in here, so be careful. I felt it slipping there, luckily I pulled it. So you don't want an accident with this thing. A nice instruction manual. Um, I'm gonna skip it, but that's only because I'm very familiar with telescopes. If you're new to them, I would suggest reading it. <laughs> You know, just in the off chance that we need to send it back or something, but let's hope there's no such issues. Um, the plastic bag seems to be closed up with a rubber band. Interesting approach. 
which is surprisingly tight. And so I'm not sure if I would have gone for a plastic bag to switch this in, but that's what they chose. This is a budget model scope. It is not going to be an obsession or such. But nonetheless, as far as budget models go, it is probably about as good as you'll ever get. Um, certainly for the price, it's the only six inch scope you're gonna get in this price range. That's a proper good reflector. Now, out of the box, you'll see it is not well balanced. That's because the front is still closed up. You can adjust the screw here to determine the amount of tension on it. So that it doesn't move more, isn't, it moves, and you want it to be able to be pointed and then stay where you pointed it. So in use, you can adjust the tension until it is comfortable. Now, these screws here hold the slide away front in place. We can pop that over there. I'm gonna flip it around so you can see it from the other side. There's a board on the bottom, which you stand on a table, and a sturdy table is necessary. Down below is the screws you use for collimation. If you buy one of these and you're not familiar with that process, I would advise you to watch some YouTube videos on collimating a telescope, because it can be tricky to newcomers if you don't know how to do it. You do want this to be sufficiently tightened, the reason that's adjustable is so you can balance it, but you want it tightened enough that um, it doesn't slide out. So right now, we seem to be fairly close to balance. It seems to stay where I'm pointing it vertically. That's good. You can see the secondary mirror up here. This warning label is telling you never to look directly at the sun with it. There are filters you can buy that makes that safe, but without one, you should not. Of course, take this cover off before observing because that's to keep sun, <laughs> that's to keep um, dust and stray light out, but you can't see through the cover. Um, let's just get it in its proper location. There are some small tweaks you can easily make to the scope to instantly increase its, it, um, it make it work easier and better for very little extra cost. Some Craft foam, black craft foam lining the inside, makes an excellent filter for stray light, so that you don't get stray light with you in this slide away portion, which is known as a truss tube upside down, by the way. Um, this um, focuser is what's known as a helical focuser because it screws in and out to adjust the focus. So lots of people recommend a little plumber's tape around the threads to remove any play in there. Which just so that while you're focusing, the you don't get, you don't go off course. Your two eyepieces, 10 millimeter and 25 millimeter. 10 millimeter will be your high magnification. 25 millimeter is low magnification, which is better for things that are large, like deep sky objects. If you want to look at the Andromeda galaxy, put the 25 mil in. If you're looking at a planet, you probably want the 10 mil. And that's really all I can do. All I can tell you straight out of the box like this. We're not gonna have clear skies for a few more days in the Netherlands, so I can't even show you me observing with it. Um, but in the meantime, that's a little bit about the scope and how it comes. I am really looking forward to trying this out, but that's gonna have to wait a few more days. Thanks for joining me, and I'm gonna sign off with that. <laughs>